三十块。So Recife is uh, recognized by the MIT Technology Review uh, for one of the 10 breakthrough technologies last year. So uh, that, uh, let's go back to the last century and see the uh, technology uh, transform in the uh, maybe 50 years. So in the uh, 1970s to 1980s, there are some emerging startups like uh, that they have proposed some uh, fundamental technology today, like the uh, instruction set architecture, the chip design methodology, they include like CIS and RISC ISOs. But they also uh, built the EDA uh, industry today. So at that time, there was a boom of new technology startups. So this is the last wave we have observed in the uh, computing industry. Now, 40 years later, in, 20, uh, in 2010, we have uh, observed a new wave for the, uh, in the in the computing industry. There's a new challenge in the last past uh, 20 years. We have seen the uh, end of the Moore's law. So what can we do to, to overcome such challenge? So uh, we are very familiar with the uh, open source uh, software community. So when we compare the chip startups with the uh, internet startups, for internet startups, they only need several months or maybe $3 million to, to grow. But for chip startups, if they want to build a working prototype for the, for the red, bar, red bar, they need like $20 million. So this is a huge uh, investment for, for startups, which is uh, not affordable for, for most companies. So, we have seen the impact of open source software ecosystem, which successfully lower the cost of innovation because several engineers with, uh, can, can develop an application prototype in several months. So by 2020, there were um, 8.9 million mobile apps. So com compared with open source software, we are also uh, building the open source chip ecosystem. We want to use it to lower the barrier of chip development. So basically, uh, uh, below the open source chip ecosystem, there will be ISAs, IPs, SOCs. There will also be languages and EDA tools, as well as the fabrication or, and simulation technology and some uh, software, including operating systems and compilers. So this forms the uh, open source platform for developing uh, chips. This will contribute, like uh, similar to the software, this will contribute like 90% line of code this will be reusable by different products and companies. And then the customized design is, is conducted by the uh, third party companies. They will customize their own IP product, maybe using less than 10% of line of code. This is the vision of the uh, open source chip ecosystem. So next, we will see what is inside a open source chip ecosystem. So first level, we, we know the uh, ISA can be open source. We have seen the uh, growth of RISC-V in the, in the past 10 years. Next, uh, under this ISA spec, we have some microarchitecture definition, including the uh, documentation describing what a processor is about, what, 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 will, uh, what modules in it. Then we will have some engineering work to convert the uh, RTL specification to RTL code. In the end, uh, EDA tools, commercial EDA tools will handle will uh, get the RTL input and output a, a GDS2 uh, layout for the chip and get productive. So we have seen three levels of open source chip ecosystem. The first one is the open ISA. The second one is the open design, which is dis described in uh, different RTLs. And the last is the open source tools and infrastructures. So that, that's how we feel the open source chip ecosystem. So. Uh, so in, uh, among the three levels of uh, open source, the, the, the first level is the uh, instruction set architecture. It is more like a standard in the uh, software community. It refers to the set of instructions that a computer can perform. So it is a standard for interactions between the software and hardware. So, and we have seen in x86 and the ARM that prior 
proprietary ISOs have prevent open source chip ecosystem because using ARM you cannot even implement an open source CPU. Otherwise, uh, you will be sued by ARM. So they, they have prevented open source chip ecosystem in the past uh, more like 40 or 50 years. Now we have RISC-V. It, it is initiated by uh, UC Berkeley in uh, 2012. So this is a slide from uh, Crystal. He, he compared the uh, RISC-V ISA against other ISAs and uh, as a uh, open standard. So let, let's build the, uh, this new way again using a historical view. So the RISC-V, the, the writing of a RISC-V is a new wave of the technology uh, revolution. So uh, today my talk will focus on the three levels of, of open source chip ecosystem. First, let's, uh, let me introduce ourselves as uh, the Beijing Institute of Open Source Chip. It is founded in 2021 and its target is to drive innovation to uh, to a self-evolving and globally open source and shared open source chip ecosystem based on RISC-V. Currently we have like uh, 450 people and a joint development team from uh, like 18 companies of more than 100 people. So we are, the, uh, one, we are one of the world's largest RISC-V research and development teams. Here's our uh, business model or our position in the industry. We want to become the coordinator uh, between universities and companies. So universities, for, for universities, they are very good at innovations. They, they propose a lot of novel ideas. But for companies, they are very good at uh, productions. They have a, 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 ma a mass uh, engineering team to convert these ideas into, the, uh, uh, into production. However, not all ideas work. So someone has to, to do the job to try to find these valuable ideas from the university and convert them to uh, industrial IPs. So that, that's our position uh, between them. We want to develop, uh, we, want to, uh, we want to get uh, ideas from universities and try to validate them through tape-outs and the demos. Uh, then then uh, the companies can get these uh, production uh, ideas from us and, and uh, implement them in their own IPs. So uh, next, I will uh, introduce in detail for our uh, open source projects. It will include three types. Uh, the first one is the design IPs. This is more like a, what ARM provides today, including uh, open source CPU core for high performance and for embedded. We also provide open source NOC. Yeah, and th this part is uh, mostly the, the same as ARM. Second, we will provide open source infrastructures and it also has several types. First, we have some uh, agile development flow, mostly for the uh, RTL design and uh, uh, architecture design. Next, we, will, we have the open verification platform for uh, functional verification. Next, we, we are also uh, developing the open source EDA tools. This is uh, compared against the uh, big three EDA companies. Next, in the third part, we are also uh, providing a fully free and open large-scale training program for uh, E and CS students. It's called One Student, One Chip. So uh, today I will introduce these three parts. First one, the uh, open source chip project called Xiangshan. It has developed uh, three generations since 2020. And uh, its performance is against uh, that, let's compare its performance against the ARM. The, the first generation in 2021 is about the same as A76, and then the sec second generation uh, in 2022 is compared with ARM Cortex A76, and now, today, the, the third generation has been released just last month, and its performance is against the ARM Innova N2. And Xiaoxiang, uh, it is a open source on a project uh, on GitHub. It has been one of the most active open source chip projects on, on the GitHub, and you can easily get its source code. The, the roadmap of our CPU core includes two tires uh, called uh, the version 2 and the version 3. The, the version 2 is mostly targeted at uh, ARM Cortex A76, 
and the uh, volume three is mostly targeted at, at ARM M2. The, the, the highlights or features of these two calls compared against ARM is that we provide highly configurable uh, CPU calls because we are open sourcing everything and we are providing the IP source code level configuration files. You can configuration the like pipeline width, the queue buffer size, the cache size, cache ways, cache cache size, or the prefetches. Every everything is open source, so you can configure 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 everything. Then we are also providing the IP at an industrial grade uh, quality, including the performance, the uh, power and the area. This is an overview of our uh, third generation architecture. It will provide the ISA, ISA extension support for Factor and Hypervisor, which is, will be compatible with the RBA23 profile. Then we are uh, specifically in detail, we have the decoupled front end uh, for instruction fetch and branch prediction. Then in the back end, we have large outstanding instruction window. For the uh, load store and caches, we have some low, low latency and high bandwidth designs that is optimized for high performance. Next, uh, uh, in the end, we are also providing support for the uh, CHI, MR CHI, and the Tailwind co coherence port, which can be easily integrated into a uh, commercial SOC design. For the performance, this is the, the real performance evaluation uh, of our chip. Uh, for for NAND, who is about like 10 uh, per gigahertz on spec in 2006. For the Kunming, who the third generation is about uh, like 15 uh, marks per gigahertz and 3 gigahertz. Uh, this shows our tip off status. We have uh, already got our chip back and bring it up uh, last year. Uh, the at the left right at the uh, right bottom. Corner, there's a video showing the our chip running. Uh, maybe a, a a video. Second, we are uh, we will I will introduce our open source SOC solutions, mostly uh, for the uh, network on chip. First, for the uh, for the CPU, we are supporting the RISC V IO MMU architecture. Also for the AIA advanced uh, interrupt architecture, as well as uh, TE. This TE is open, also open source, and uh, it has published papers uh, on, on the uh, academia. For the for the NOC, we have some uh, optional cluster level shared L3 cache, as well as the uh, 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 third party commercial NOC. For details on the open NOC uh, project, is shown in this slide. First, it's com uh, compliant with the Ember CHI. Uh, protocol four. Next, uh, it it supports a uh, non-inclusive, non-exclusive policy. It also supports some snoop filters and uh, QS QS uh, control. It supports up to an eight eight by n mesh network and uh, one hundred twenty eight processors. Its data channel is two hundred and fifty six bits. So, uh, in in the right corner, you can see a demo. This is the uh, second part. So for the uh, third part on the infrastructures, we are building uh, an open source verification platform. So as we know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the design flow and verification flow in the industry is very coupled. And based on like Verilog and the system Verilog UVM. So now we are implementing the processor in Chisel, a, a more advanced uh, RTL. Or, uh, a higher with higher level abstraction. So to verify the Chisel uh, projects, we have to develop some more uh, competitive and uh, effic efficient verification tools. So th these are some of the tools, and they they are described in our paper. So, but even with these agile maybe verification tools, the verification is still very hard because it still requires extensive human resource investments. So how, how can we address that? We all, we, we, again, we think of the, how software community overcomes this problem. 
So we, we can see there are orders of magnitude few hardware engineers than software engineers. So software testing is a very popular method and a very active area. However, for the uh, hardware community, it is very uh, maybe, maybe small or less active. For example, on GitHub, the uh, using Verilog or system Verilog for for PRs only account for maybe 0.35 percent. So it's it's quite uh, smaller than the software community. So what we propose is an open fire creation platform, which will incorporate all the software community developers for hardware testing or hardware verification. So we are going to provide a platform which allows software test software testers to verify the uh, hardware designs in a software way. That's how, how we do is to what we do is to support maybe like multiple languages including Java, Python, Solang, and then we can uh, absorb software engineers. First, uh, we we uh, we propose a, rep, a repository supporting multiple languages for verification. We are going. We have now converted RTL to Python, Java, Scala, and C plus plus and Go. So it will be compatible for software uh, for software people to verify uh, hardware designs using their software testing technology, te software testing tools. For example, uh, there is a lot of software fuzzers in the open source community. So you can, uh, for now we are providing, we, are, we, we already provide some uh, repos on GitHub which supports integrating software fuzzers to, to the hardware simulation and then you can fuzz in the, you can fuzz the uh, hardware designs using the, the software fuzzers you know. Where, for example, this is also a, a coverage support with uh, a PyTest framework. The, the fourth project I'm going to introduce is the uh, IEDA project for open source EDA. Its objective is to provide a EDA infrastructure for the open source community and open source world. So uh, with this open source uh, EDA infrastructure, we can also explore new and efficient EDA research and different methods uh, as well as well, it will also provide a high quality and a performing, perform, performant EDA tool. This is an overview of our existing open source EDA tools. It is mostly uh, focused on the uh, fraud planning, routing, and uh, uh, like make mostly for the physical design stage, including fraud planning, placement, uh, timing, routing. This is a, a project on progress, and you can check our status on the uh, GitHub. We have already used uh, uh, the open source EDA for for three tables since 2018, and this shows our timeline for the uh, projects. Next, uh, we are also using this open source EDA infrastructures for education and high high performance CPU. Uh, on the first part, the one student, one, one student, one chip students, they are using these open source EDA tools to build their own chips and get a tape out. And the second, we will also use the open source EDA tool for, for tape out for the high performance reserve CPU. So, so th these are the infrastructures for our overall open source chip ecosystem. Uh, th now I will summarize my, my talk. It will uh, today I'm going to um, I have introduced three uh, parts. First is the RISC-V. It will it is an open and free standard for CPUs. Second, uh, now is a good time for us to build a globally shared open source chip ecosystem. Not in, not uh, only including the RISC-V, also including the uh, open source hardware IPs and open source uh, tools for building that uh, open source IPs. So together we can we can work. So there will be a collaboration opportunity like uh, Linux and Red Hat mode. So for Linux, we are providing against uh, compared against Linux, we are providing the open source Changshan as a uh, open source uh, hardware IP and a open source community. And then Red Hat will do the customization and the uh, commercial or business. So 
there will also be a, a, a maybe a institute uh, compared against Red Hat for Shangshan in, in the next few years. So that's all for my talk and we can, I'm glad to take any questions and if you have uh, need more information you can contact our colleague at our uh, with this email. So any, any questions I'm glad to take. Thank you.